people move on when they want to. The problem is that they don't allow and or permit themselves to feel their true emotions. And that could be a huge problem for you and in your future. Negative emotions often are demonized. And we are made to feel as though feeling sad, angry, and hurt is not good for us. We absolutely need, need to go through the grieving process. The process that brings sometimes depression, anger, blame, depression, anger, blame, false hope, and many more things is a part of it. Often these emotions, they go around in circles. So it can feel as though you're getting over it, but then the wacko feelings come and smack you in your face. It feels, it feels like you're thinking about them again. You're, 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 it may even feel like the hurt is endless. Um, but remember, remember this, go with it. Accept the feelings for what they are. It is a means to an end, like my mom used to say. And she says it all the time. Listen, remove your ex from your social media and from your phone. Do it right now. I dare you. Get rid of them. In this day and age, we are bombarded by other people's lives. Seeing what your ex is up to is ridiculous. It's an easy problem. And it's not giving you a, enough time for space to heal either. If you're finding it hard to let go of someone, then you need to consider removing them from your social media, including your phone. This may feel like the last thing that you really want to do but sometimes the best things to do aren't always the most comfortable. Remember that you are reminded of him by looking at everything that he's doing, opposed to seeing what you are up to all the time and only opening emotional wounds over and over and over again. And it will never heal. You will never give your chance yourself a chance to heal. After the initial sadness of deletion, you will feel very empowered. And this empowerment will be good for your soul. Trust me. Now, I don't know if a lot of people really believe in writing things down. I actually feel that that is a huge, huge empowerment um, outlet. There's a wonderful power in writing things down. And journaling um, your feelings may seem straight out of a movie, but it has great, great value. It has great healing qualities. Um, when you write it down, you feel you can read it back to yourself and then you can throw it away. You can throw it away, it's fine. Seeing your feelings written on paper is the objective. It can help your mind gain perspective and see things from another point of view. Another great thing to do is write down a list of the parts of the past relationship that annoyed the hell out of you or irritated you. A lot of the times we romanticize about the past and remember it better when you write down the negatives. And it serves as a reminder and will help you when your moments relapse. Like when, when you want that drug, like, you know, you, you shake in and you want, you want that, that thing. That is your fix. Your fix is no longer there. So now you have to make a, a situation for yourself and all those sitting around eating all the chocolate and binge watching your favorite shows is fun. It shows that initially there needs to come a time when being proactive is a must. 
to get your life going again. Now this is a value and seeing people socializing and starting an exercise um, class or routine going running, walking, cycling, anything that will get those endorphins going is a plus. Catalyst, call it what you want. Recovery, it will clear your mind and you will be more optimized. Your life will be more of a speedy recovery towards getting into something else. Getting around people who love you. It serves as a gentle reminder that love still exists and it doesn't just exist in a romantic relationship. Friends and family can help you get out of it. It's a funk and you got to get out of it quicker. So let's try to get some closure here. The closure is necessary. So getting closure is one of the best ways that you can understand why you two wouldn't have worked out any way. Regardless of whether you were dumped or you were the dumper, right? If you're still hung up on this person, then you're going to need to do some digging. I can't help you with that. That's the part that you gotta do. Maybe you were bad for each other. Maybe the timing was not right. Or maybe you two just didn't have it in you to keep trying to make the relationship work in the first place. And I always say, whatever it is, Find the reason. Often reasons that you need to let go. Remember specific things and examples that remind you of things like what they said or what you did or didn't say or didn't do as a reminder as to why the two of you might ha not have worked initially. And I, I have to keep reminding you about that transition. You might even remember the day. And he was like, ah, I'm done. I will tell you why I'm making this video. I'm making this video for the people in the back. The ones that come in late all the time. We need to know the difference between getting over someone and acting like you got over someone. Because we know you didn't. You just pretended. And I want you to pay attention. Pay attention to the breakup because there's time that was in between that breakup. Questions that you might have asked them or they may have asked you. Valid concerns at hand. If someone reached back to get you because you missed them and you're thinking, should I take them back? Be mindful of the amount of time in between the breakup. You both are not the same people. We know that. You were you were different then and you're more different now. So don't think about going backwards. Think about what's happening now and the things that are going to change your life once you become empowered. Empowerment is an art. There's an art to it. And after doing it one time, as you know, you're doing something 21 times, it becomes a habit. Good news, there's not a lot of time in between I miss you and meeting someone new. Just don't compare the two people. It's not fair to the new guy. So here comes the 20 second window right before you officially take them back. Here's your first. Are you ready? Number one. Number one, ending a relationship is never easy. And it can be even harder if there's still love there. But just because you felt heartbreak, it's not the end of the world. The good news is that the pain won't last forever. And it certainly won't keep you from falling in love again with the new guy. Human beings are meant to form relationships. 
and you're meant to fall in love. And just as most people will experience love at least one time in their life, many will also experience a sting of heartbreak. It's expected. It's expected to be devastating at the end of a relationship. Even when the relationship might not have been a positive thing. After all, love is blind, right? So it has the ability to make people overlook their partner's flaws. Like dude can have one eye and you still with him. He still look good, he fine. That's madness. That is crazy, especially, especially when the person is no good for you. But the trick to knowing when it's over and when it's at its truest is usually at the end of the relationship. Seriously, like when bad memories are often overshadowed by good ones, that should make us calm down. The question is, we broke up because we don't like each other. That's the question. But that's the answer also. But just like any other wound, heartbreak heals with time. And a positive outlook on life, believe me, it is possible. It is possible to move on. Number two. And we'll, please, well, nobody is perfect. Relationships are alike. None of them are alike. And the certain ones that come with it, heartbreak is a part of it. So just because a partner has ended a relationship does not mean you are unlovable, is what I'm saying, or unworthy of anybody love. It actually means that you focus on the wrong person instead of what you could have been doing. Because right now you need to start making yourself priority at this moment. Right now. If you think that blocking your ex on your social media will make you less sad, then do it. I suggest that you do it right now. If it often helps you to keep your mind off the pain, to block somebody, I'm not really a fan of blocking, but do it. Also, talking helps. It's a sure way to limit the emotions as far as tragedy. You might feel uncomfortable discussing certain things, or you you might be ready. You might be ready to talk. You might be ready to talk about your ex. You might not feel entirely comfortable hearing about them, but at some point, however, talking through emotions can and always will be beneficial and often an outside perspective, like my mother. You know, she always got something to say. So the same is true when you decide to get rid of someone and you have physical reminders of your relationship while keeping pictures of them and memorabilia, it's perfectly okay. But keep in mind that if you don't throw those things away, your pain is gonna stick around a little longer. I'm just saying. Number three, you may never realize this but the moment the very moment when time goes on feelings of hurt and betrayal it lessens reminders of your relationship won't be as painful as they want and a year from now thinking of that person won't even cause the same feelings of sadness as it does right now you won't bubble up you won't hurt. And moving past these negative feelings in time, don't rush it, in time we will will feel a need to ignore the typical timelines for dealing with heartbreak. And that is okay. That is okay. It's fine. 
However, uh, if our negative um, feelings are not healing in time, it may be beneficial to seek professional help. Um, in coming to terms with these emotions, as thinking about negative and painful thoughts can be damaging to, um, to us and to future relationships. So getting back into positive mindset is crucial to our sanity. I'm just saying. I hope this helps. I really do. And um, this is the virtual love hack that I had to do today. I had to. I just got home from work, so I'm good. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know, hit that notification bell for the next virtual love hack. I got you.